Hello, Assalamualaikum. Welcome to MGT162, uh, Fundamentals of Management. Uh, so, this is our last chapter, chapter 10, with the topic Management from Islamic Perspective. So the learning objective of this chapter is we want to do the introduction to management, uh, Islamic management, to identify the principles of Islamic management, to identify the characteristic and principles of Islamic leaders, and to explain the Islamic management function. Okay. So here is the diagram for this chapter. Okay. So uh, the first three parts of the uh, chapter is about the introduction, principles of Islamic management, and also the characteristic of Islamic leaders. So first, we're going to do the introduction. Okay, Islamic is a complete way of life and Allah's guidance extends into all areas of our life. Okay? So the Islamic, uh, the principles of Islam aim to establish a just society wherein everyone behave responsibly and honestly. Okay? So the function of Islam is to allow people to become aware of the parameters of human behavior as individuals of society for the sake of living in harmony and happiness in this transitory world and the hereafter. So our, um, our purpose is not only at this dunya but also uh, for our afterlife. Okay? So management is stability. We know that management is the ability to utilize okay, human capital and material resources okay, to achieve desired goals and both short-term and long-term goals. Uh, as, a, as a Muslim, we have two goals, okay, short-term and long-term goals. So whatever goals that we want to try to achieve in dunya, we consider it as the short goals, okay, short-term goals. And uh, our uh, whatever that we want to achieve, of course, we want to get rewarded in paradise. Okay, our long term that will be our long term goals. Okay, so Islamic management perspectives is practically ever since, since the era of uh, Prophet Muhammad so Wasallam. Okay, so this type of management okay, will follow the teaching of Islam okay, by Prophet Muhammad so Wasallam directly, which is generated from the Al Quran and also Al Sunnah. Okay. So, it will give us detailed regulations on how to go about our economic life cycle, lifestyle, which are both balanced between dunya and also akhirat. Okay. So, now we want to see the principles of Islamic management. Meaning that when we, want, we, when we apply the management from the Islamic perspective, before this what we learn is about the conventional uh, management. Okay. But as Muslim, we need okay to apply to use the islamic management okay so islamic principles teach us that time to be well invested not to be wasted as a muslim we cannot waste our time okay so always make sure that we spend our time wisely okay uh, when we um work okay uh, or uh, as a student you learn okay so spend your time wisely okay focus on whatever that you want to achieve this in junior but do not forget about akhirat okay uphold and internalize the islamic ethical values so we have to hold the islamic ethical values the all the good deeds okay according to uh, our Quran. Okay. Should be no favoritism, okay, bias or discrimination, okay, in uh, applying the uh, Islamic management. We should not practice favoritism or bias between genders, between other races, or do discrimination because of the race, because of colors. Okay. Employees must be paid fairly and equally. So of course we had to pay all the employees equally, fairly, according to their tasks, according to their work, according to their qualification, according to their experience. Um, also, we have to practice shura, okay? consultation based on mature discussions and cooperation among members. This is just like the group decision making. So we must do the consultation. Human nature and needs should be both considered simultaneously. So whatever the uh, our employees needs, okay, uh, nature there should be uh, we try to consider should be conducive rewards for exceptional achievement to prevent violations. So of course, like the uh, conventional management, we also when we apply when we use the Islamic management, we give rewards to the employees. The moral or the religious value of work, 
okay, should be integrated in the work. Okay, so while doing all this, uh, try to achieve all these objective in dunya, we should also integrate okay the religious value in our work. So what are the characteristics of these Islamic leaders? Okay, first the Islamic leaders he must have the alliance, uh, allegiance to faithful. Okay, so he must be a faithful person. Okay, someone who can be uh, trust trusted, okay? trustworthy person. He has global perceived goals, not individual, meaning that as a manager, he must try to achieve the organizational goals and not his individual goals. He must adhere to the Sharia, follow the Sharia law according to Al Quran and Sunnah. He also must delegate stress, do the delegation, okay? just like the conventional management. So, we already covered the first uh, three parts of the chapter. So, now we want to focus on the principles of Islamic leader. Just now, we look into the characteristic of Islamic leader. So, as the Islamic leader, what are the principles, the practice that he must use? Okay. So, we have Shura, justice, freedom of expression, masriya, qualification, and also rewards. Okay, next is principles of Islamic leader. The first one. The leader must use shura, okay, or mature consultation. Mature consultation or shura is managing through teamwork, meaning that he must always consult with the his team. Okay, leaders are obligated to consult those with knowledge and who would provide good service. So, as a leader, sometimes he needs to uh, consult with the teamwork, especially to get all the information. Okay, who have the knowledge, perfect knowledge. If he, the leader, didn't have the knowledge, so if he will use the shura. It's very important to use the shura, or in the conventional, they use they call it as the group decision making. Okay, so this will enable members to participate. Okay, in the group decision in the decision making process okay we can monitor the leader's behavior it can also allow all the group members to give their opinion because we know people love to give opinion okay when they have the opinion when they have the idea so we should share the ideas with our leaders the second one the islamic leader must be justice okay leaders should deal with people justly and fairly regardless of race color national origin or religion okay so even though uh, other people might not be the same religion as us we have to treat them justly you cannot favor other people based on their race or based on their color and so on so the leader must uh, treat people justly and fairly Freedom of expression. So the Islamic leaders should practice freedom of expression. Okay, leaders are encouraged to provide and invite constructive critique through two-way communication. Okay, so the leader can um, uh, give advice to the followers, to the subordinate. Same thing to the subordinate. Okay, so we have two-way communication. It's not only the leader give the information; the subordinate also need to give the information to the leader. Okay. Next, we have Masru'iyah, okay, the concept of legality where management must ensure that any action taken must be within the legal boundary of man-made laws and sharing of laws. Okay. So Masru'iyah means that uh, all the decisions, okay, uh, whatever that we do, our activities inside the organization must be according to law, okay, where the law... Um, man-made laws or Malaysian's law, for example, or according to, must be according to the Sharia law. Next, qualification. Okay, When the leader, the Islamic leader, he want to select the personnel or the employees, it must be on kuah or strength and also amanah or trustworthy. Okay, So you, when you want to employ a uh, new employee, new staff, so it must be on the ability, their expertise, their experience and also other criteria, characteristic or their academic excellence and so on. Reward, okay, so managers must be fair in action and reward people accordingly. So reward is compensation, okay. So we not only we want to re, uh, give rewards, again, okay? not only for today, but also uh, after we die, that we stay on it. 
Next is the Islamic management function. Okay, as we know, in uh, management, okay, as I said, there are four functions of management, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So same thing with the Islamic management, we also have four functions, planning, organizing, leading, and also controlling. So first is planning. Okay. Planning is a practice okay, which is prevalent since the era of Prophet Muhammad SAW while preaching the faith of Islam okay, to the world, especially the Quraysh, Quraysh tribe. Okay. Islam practices the planning processes in terms of setting objective or goals. Okay. So according to Islam, human beings, Khalifa, were created by Allah to focus on and fulfill two purposes. Okay. So what are the two purposes? The first one, we have the long-term goals okay, of being worthy servant of Allah, okay, avoiding sin and obeying the teachings of the Quran and as sunnah This is our long-term goals, long-term goals to be the worthy servant of Allah so that we will be rewarded with Jannah. Okay. Short-term goals is being produce, productive in terms of products and services, academic achievement, financial profits, or improvement in performance. Meaning that whatever that we want to achieve in this dunya, we consider it as the short term. But our long-term goal should always to be rewarded um, jana. Okay? Paradise. Okay, that will be our uh, goals, our uh, ultimate goals. Next, we have organizing. Okay, uh, same thing like the um, conventional management. Okay, organizing comprises the structuring of an organizational structure, utilizing of resources or individuals, authority and power, delegating, as well as decentralization. So basically, organizing is the same thing like the conventional. Okay. The third one is leading. Islamic perspective defines leading as the process of moving people in a direction through motivating them. Okay, a leader serves and helps others to get ahead. So same thing as the conventional uh, Islamic leading is also a practice of the giving the direction, motivation, leading the employees. Okay. And the last one is controlling. Okay, in Islam, the basis for control may differ from the conventional approach. Okay, mechanisms such as internal or external control, business or personal controls, and social or legal controls must not violate the basic principles of the Sharia. Okay, if using the conventional, we only focus on the man-made laws. Okay, uh, but in uh, Islamic management, we must adhere to the Sharia law. So whatever that we want to control. It must not violate the Sharia law. Okay, so basically for the Islamic management functions, okay, still we use the four function: planning, organizing, leading, and controlling, like the conventional uh, management. Uh, however, the difference is uh, the biggest difference is in terms of planning. For the Islamic, we have the uh, short term goals and long term goals. Okay, so basically we consider everything in dunya. Our goals in dunya is uh, whether it's 5 years goal, 10 years goal, 20 years goal, everything is considered as short-term goals. Okay? The long-term goals, the ultimate goals is to be rewarded in paradise. Okay? So uh, that's it for this chapter. With that, uh, thank you so much.